Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this great opportunity of delving into the mystery of Christ, the living Savior, Lord. in the name of Jesus Christ. We are looking at the topic that says how to encounter Jesus Christ every day. Some of us do not know that Jesus Christ is meant to be encountered every day by every believer. We are going to be looking at the Word of God and uh, by the help of the Holy Spirit assimilate this all-important message. The book of Colossians chapter 1. The Bible says in verse 26, Even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. So what we are dealing with now is a mystery, and it's important to understand that the mystery is a secret, a revelation made available to a person, two or more. And so we have to uh, move on that understanding. Verse 27 says, To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. I want to repeat verse 27. To whom God would make known. There are things only God makes known. Only God reveals by his spirit. And this is one of them. And if it's not revealed, if it's not made known to you, you will not understand it, you will not walk in it. It is real, it is there, but because it's not made known to you, it will be like strange, alien, or whatever to you. But it's important to understand that Christianity is full of mysteries. And so it says, to whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, it is important to understand that Christ in us is a mystery that carries glory. I want to put it like this. Your connection with the Christ in heaven is not the same thing with your connection with the Christ in you. The one that carries your hope of glory is the one in you. I'm talking mystery. It is the same Christ, but by mystery we are made to understand that Christ in us is the hope of glory. And we know that Christ is in heaven. And we who are listening to this scripture might begin to think like ordinary people. How is Christ in heaven as still in us as our hope of glory? Christ is in us through the Holy Spirit. Christ lives in every believer, every believer. But look at what makes the difference, what you do with Christ in you. Now, it is important to know that your relationship, your, your understanding of how to relate with the Christ in you is the connecting point of the glories. I want us to look at it this way. Why is Christ in you? Why is Jesus Christ in you? Jesus Christ is in you because the glory that he carries are meant to be shown in and to you. And this happens through the encounters that you have with the Jesus Christ that is in you. Now look at it this way. Before we come to the point of how do I now, how do I relate, how do I interact with the Christ that is in me? How do I do that? Because that's where encounter, the issue of encounter comes out now. How do you, how do you relate with your wife, 
with your husband, with somebody that you have intimacy with. If Jesus Christ is in you, and the Bible says that Christ should dwell in our heart by faith. Now, everything you are doing with this Christ that is in you is by faith. You can hug him, he can hug you, you can, you, you can, you can kiss him, he can kiss you, you can uh, touch him, you can begin to have a cordial, a, a relationship that is real by faith with him. You see him every day. You, you interact with He's not just there for being their sake. The word of the Lord will recognize say that the Christ in us is the hope of glory. And so, when you begin to come to understand that even as we are listening now, you can be seeing the Christ in you. You can see him. And I, yes, I'm, I'm sounding, uh, 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 this is not strange. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking scripture and um, we are dealing with mystery. As we are talking now, you can see the Christ. You can focus on the inside and be seeing Jesus Christ, the living Lord, the one that walks upon the waters. You can hug him. You can, you, you can, you can you know, treat him like a person. You can interact with him in the way that you interact with a living person because he's more living than anybody you know that is alive. Now, when you continue in that manner, constantly, you will begin to have daily encounters with him. The Bible here was talking about unveiling the mystery. So we are not talking about what is going to be understood by your logic, by your natural senses in any way. It is all based on faith. Now, what many of us have not started doing on daily basis is what we are discussing now. Some of us are looking up to heaven for Jesus Christ that is in heaven. But the one that is in them is not an issue. And that is why one of the major reasons they lack the glories that he is meant to display in their lives. And I want to say this. And it could shock somebody. If you do not interact with the Jesus that is in you, the glory of making rapture might be under suspension. If the Jesus Christ that is in you, you begin to be real about him, you begin to deal with him as a person, then when you start this, with time, it will begin to be very real to you. Because, you see how, you don't do it with your senses. You don't look, try to understand it with your senses. No, you are following the scripture. You are doing whatever you are doing based on the scripture. First John chapter 4 verse 4 tells us that greater is he than in us, than he that is in the world. He said, little children, that we have overcome. Why? Because the greater one is in us. There are people who are crying when they will encounter Jesus, when Jesus will appear to them physically, when Jesus will do this, when Jesus will do that. But they are disconnected from the Jesus that is right inside them. Some people will pay any amount, if they can, to go to Jerusalem and go to the grave of Jesus Christ and then put JP as a title to their name. But the one that is alive, the one that is not in the grave, the one that is alive in them, they have no business with. They are not in communication. They are not in interaction with him. Now, listen very carefully. What we are discussing here, we, we transform your Christian life entirely. When you begin to do this, when you begin to do this, avoiding your senses, avoiding your human uh, you know, reasoning, but based on the faith of the scripture, like I try to quote First John chapter 4, verse 4, that the one in you is greater than the one that is in the world. 
You see, you see, one of the ironies of today is that people take time to learn how Satan, the devil, and demons operate. But they don't take time to learn how the one that is living in them operates. When you when you look at it, it's, 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 it makes you it's, it's, it makes you 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 it's, it makes, I don't know how to put it. People are so quick to want to learn how the devil and the demons operate, but they are not conscious to learn how the one that is living in them operate. That is very very devastating. So we are looking at this. How do you do this? You take out time and interact with the Jesus that is in you. I'm not talking about looking at anywhere. Inside you. Right inside you. How are you sure that he's there? You are sure that he's there because the scripture cannot lie. The scripture cannot be broken. Now watch this. Let me read this. Um, 1 John chapter 4 verse 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. What makes you different? What makes you world overcomer? Is because the glorious one is in you. And what you do with him is all. When you begin to practice this, you begin to have encounters that you have never had before with Jesus Christ, the living Lord. Do what? Embrace him. Have a picture of faith of his you interacting with him. Sit down with him in your heart, in your soul. Talk with him. This Jesus, the living Jesus, the glorified Jesus, was the same one who went about healing those oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. This same Jesus was the one that was opening blind eyes. This same Jesus was the one that walked on the sea. This same Jesus was the one that did all the miracles. Every single miracle you read in the Bible. This same Jesus Christ that is living in you. But you know what? Ignorance can catch the things that matter. And they will become as if they don't matter. When you begin to practice the living Jesus in you. When you hear people celebrate that Jesus is alive. If Jesus is alive and he's not alive in you. It doesn't make any meaning. Oh, Jesus is alive. How much alive is he in you? Is the issue. Now, I want us to look at this scripture. The book of Revelation chapter 1, verse 18. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Now, this Jesus we are talking about, the living Jesus as we call him, has the key, the master key, that can open and lock anything, anywhere, at any time. This is who you are carrying. He has the key that can deal with any situation, any circumstance. Now, Jesus was testifying here, he said, I am he that liveth, and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. I am he that liveth. Now, when you look at verse 17, the word of God says, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. That same Jesus can lay hand on you as you are communicating with him in your heart, in your, in your inner most being. Now, practice makes perfect. When you continue to practice this, it will become part and parcel of you. And when it becomes part and parcel of you, you will be encountering Jesus Christ on daily basis in different ways. The, the people that practice different kind of things seem to be wiser than Christians, and it's not meant to be so. They know how to operate with their useless masters. But many Christians do not know that the Christ in, in them is the hope of glory. And that Christ in you is not just there because he's stranded. No. He is there because his glory must be seen now and in eternity. 
His glory has to be seen in and through you. And what will release those glories is you coming to terms with this truth that we are discussing. That your relationship, your intimacy, your interaction with Jesus that is in you as a person. When you now look at all the things that Jesus did in the, in the world when he was here, literally. When you look at all he did. Now, this one that is inside you, can he be inside you and you are stranded? This Jesus fed thousands of people. Can he be inside you and hunger will kill you? This Jesus turned water to wine in a marriage. Can he be inside to you and your marriage will have no wine? This Jesus that is here did all manner of miracles, signs, and wonders. And when he died, when he laid down his life and he was buried, when he resurrected for 40 days, he went about with living proofs for 40 days, every day. And so as a believer that knows that Christianity is practical, this is meant to bring you out of religion. Because there is so much mix up with Christianity and religiosity today that many of us have forgotten that Christianity is about a personality. That Christianity is about the person of Jesus who lives in us. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8, one of the greatest scriptures in the Bible that people don't take note of, says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same yesterday means he is unchanging. The same yesterday, today, and forever means he can never change. The same yesterday, today, and forever means that he is God Almighty because only God cannot change. God came in form of Jesus as Emmanuel to be with us, to live in us, to abide with us. No wonder when he was to be born, there was no room for him at the inn. There was no room for him. And look at how these things work. The most qualified person did not have any room in the inn. Why the unqualified people had places in the inn? The most qualified did not have any room in the inn. There was no room for the master of the universe, the creator of heaven and earth. There was no room. But what? Thank God. The manger was not far. He was to be born in the manger among animals, among sheep, because he was going to be the good shepherd. And so when he got there, he came out and was born among sheep because that's what he has come to do. He was born in the midst of the sheep, in the manger, because he's the good shepherd. I said something earlier, the most qualified was disqualified. There was no in for him, but he had to move on to the manger. And that is why you, as a child of God, sometimes you might be most qualified, but human beings will disqualify you. If you don't know yourself, you will listen to them, because you don't know that the manger is still ahead. Now, he had the manger, he was born there, and that was where the wise men came to look for him. The wise men came to bring him gold, frankincense, and man. That's where they came to look for him and find him among the sheep as a good shepherd. Now, this Jesus that is living in you is there because that's where he's meant to be. Jesus is not living in any uh, brick, cement, uh, auditorium, no matter how many billions or millions you use to build it, make it a condition, make it whatever condition, he's not come to live there, he's not living there, he will never live there, he has come to live in us. But we, who he has come to live in, don't understand that the hope of glory is in us. And so you can imagine sometimes when somebody is, you are carrying Jesus, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the greatest healer, the greatest physician, you are carrying the one that has the answer, the solution to all the circumstances and situations of your life. And you are running from one choice to the other. One fake pastor to the other. One false prophet to the other. One prayer line to another prayer grief. One th just like that. Just like that. And the one that is in you is called the hope of glory. 
Sometimes I wonder how the demons will look at some of us and how they will feel. Looking at you and seeing what you are carrying, but you don't know what you are carrying. And so because you don't know what you are carrying, you are not able to see the glory that he has come as Emmanuel to stay in you with and to release. And so you keep on beating about the bush, praying without understanding, fasting without understanding, going to church when the real person you're looking for in the church is inside you. I'm not trying to say you should not go to church, that's what I'm saying. But know that who you are looking for is on the inside. And now imagine what will happen if all the Christians, all the believers come to time of the mystery we are discussing here and begin to practice it, begin to practice this mystery and begin to grow in the knowledge of this mystery. When we gather as an assembly or gather anywhere, you are coming with Jesus. 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 You will now see the type of glory that will be made manifest. But this one is coming with gossip. This one is coming with hatred. This one is coming with religiosity. This one is coming with discrimination. This one is coming with And what do they find at the end of the day? Fuji house of commotion, confusion, and the rest of it. So what we are sharing here is the knockout. If you have not started, Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever is the greatest news. Anything you saw him did in the Bible is a sample. This one that is glorified will do more. Right now, begin to practice this. Look inward. Look inward. Begin to look inward, not outside. Interact with him. Talk to him. Develop the type of intimacy, knowledge, understanding that is needed to know that you know that you know that you are carrying all that you will ever need. The one you are carrying inside is the one that created all things. He created everything. If you begin to practice this by the help of the Holy Spirit, based on the scripture, which we can take more and more, based on the scripture, by faith, not allowing your senses or your human reasoning or theology to interfere with it. Because sometimes we try to bring doctrine and theology and miss the person of Jesus. As I round up here, I want to pray with you and pray for you that God Almighty, who is Jesus Christ that came in flesh, who is Jesus Christ that is living in every one of us, will be revealed to every one of us by the Holy Spirit for daily encounters in Jesus' mighty name. If the Jesus that raised the dead is in you, if the Jesus that nobody ever met in the Bible and was given a second appointment is in you, if the Jesus that heals all manner of sickness and disease is in you, if the Jesus that <laughs> could turn a legion to an evangelist, if that Jesus is in you, begin to practice what you have learned today. When he was in the boat, in the ship with the disciples, storm arose. What did Jesus do? What did the disciples do? They turned to him. He was in their midst. They turned to him. And what happened? The storm was calmed. If that Jesus is in you, which storm should get you confused, get you off balance? None. It's only because you are not yet practicing the hope of glory. You are not yet practicing, meditating, speaking, interacting. Just focus on the inside and see him smiling, even right now. Smiling that your eyes is being opened. That you are understanding this mystery. He is smiling. That he has been there for too long. That you are looking for him east, west, and north, and south. And I pray right now that the grace to go deeper in this mystery will be released upon every one of us. This is the end of discussion. This is all you need. And I know that the Holy Spirit has handed over to every one of us that is opportune to listen to this message the very key that you need in time and eternity. God bless you. Until I come your way again, my name is Witness Ken Paul Obieke, speaking as a witness who have seen him and heard from him, and making him real, the living Jesus, to the dying world. Your answer, your solution, is all put in one person, Jesus. The living Jesus. God bless you. In Jesus' name.